First of all, thank you all for coming to talk about Braden's Law. Clearly, it's such an important law, especially when we deal with our children um, and their future and the dangerous parts that's, our, that's on the social media. Let's talk about Braden first. When you first learned about what happened to Braden, and you were saying, Representative, you sat your kids down. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I remember it very vividly and receiving a, a call from my wife. Uh, we have three, uh, well, we have triplet daughters that graduated in 23 and a son who graduated in 22. And that was a moment to bring everybody together and talk about these dangers. You know, our world is so small right now. Um, these events have gone from the park to the playground and now, you know, inside our house with these devices. And, and so it's our job as parents to really hammer it on our kids and educate them on the social media dangers. So yeah, it was, uh, it was very riveting for us. I feel like Braden's Law, the three of you coming together, you're now saying it's now our job as Ohio lawmakers to make sure this doesn't happen again. And for you, Representative Lear, this is kind of his home. This is your backyard. This was your alma mater. Absolutely. I mean, I graduated when it was still K through 12 in one school building, and Braden should be graduating from Olentangy High School. And it, it breaks your heart to see and hear about the things that are happening to our kids. And so I know Senator Brenner and Representative Lorenz and I are, are very cognizant of how the legislature needs to catch up with technology and try to provide as much protections within the Constitution as we can so that parents have a little more support both here and at school. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about Braden Saul, we were saying, who went to who first? Were you starting on something already similar to this, or how did this come about? Yeah, we, uh, I, I worked uh, locally uh, with uh, Rachel Winder, and uh, we started drafting the bill. We've had numerous drafts of this bill uh, to make sure we get it right. We've worked with our uh, county prosecutor, uh, Melissa Schiffel, and uh, their association has looked at it. Uh, this is something that I think has taken a lot of teamwork with my colleagues here in the other chamber. And I think we've put together a good product that will uh, hopefully uh, prevent and uh, put some real teeth into the law uh, so that people realize they shouldn't use sextortion. And if they do it, they, they don't want to do it here in Ohio. As a parent, I was very surprised to learn that sexual sextortion is not a crime in Ohio. In 2024, how how did that never come to be? Like, why? You know, it's it's kind of sad, but I mean, we also just recently passed the law uh, for uh, rape. You know, with spousal rape. I mean, that had not changed. So, you know, bringing us into the 21st century, uh, this is something that definitely needed to be brought in the 21st century, especially given the fact that every single kid, even little kids, have access to cell phones. Uh, they can, uh, you know, easy access to videos, photos, uh, you name it. Uh, they can text them. They can send them through various uh, messenger systems. And the fact that kids can be exploited already, let alone now with these types of, uh, you know, devices that are readily available, uh, we need to bring this uh, law up into the 21st century and, and help protect kids. And, and my colleagues here in, in the House and I, I think, uh, I've got a bill that will do just that. You talk about a bill that has teeth. Too often we do see many bills, sounds great on paper. Where's the teeth in this when you talk about wanting to stop this online crime, these, these perpetrators? Where do you see that teeth? It's a felony now in Ohio, hopefully with Braden's Law, but what would that do in terms of stopping these people from getting access to our kids? I think it, it really raises the awareness and, and the accountability level. And if you're one of those terrible, evil people that are thinking about committing this crime, maybe you'll think again. Uh, so for me, the penalty levels that have increased are, are substantial in nature. Uh, and hopefully that will thwart or you know, deter people that are thinking about going about this kind of action. Yeah. If we can find them too, right? That's part of the problem. Right. One of the components for Braden's law is the digital access. Mm -hmm. Talk about that aspect of this law and why that could be challenging. So Braden's family was trying to find out what on earth had happened. And it took them months and months 
to get access to his phone. The telecommunications companies didn't want to allow it. So in Braden's law, we provide immunity for the telecommunications companies, but we also provide an avenue um, through the appellate court so that hopefully within 30 days, if somebody needs to see what has my child been doing, who has been contacting them, they should be able to do that in a much more expedited way. And that's a key component of Braden's law. Do you expect that to be challenged in any way? We've seen what NetChoice has done to the Parental Social Media Act where you know, they claim rights of privacy and so on and so forth. Could this be an aspect of Braden's Law that could face... We, we've taken a look at other uh, states. Uh, a bunch of other states have already enacted this. Uh, we've tried to tailor it in such a way that uh, it meets you know, First Amendment protections uh, as well as privacy protections. Uh, but uh, gives a, a process so that you know parents get access to what has happened, uh, you know, to, in, with the, the phones and the social media content. But uh, and as as uh, Representative Lear pointed out, also protects the telecommunications companies uh, so that they're not just uh, sued. And actually, that is one of the aspects that we were concerned with in the bill. Uh, that we were concerned that they would be suing and potentially bottling the bill up. So taking that off of the table. Uh, should make this uh, a bill that can go into law and uh, hopefully not be challenged. I, I would just like to add, the, the other key travesty in this whole event was, you know, the poor Marcus family had to wait 10 months, 10 months to get access to that phone. And that really uh, precipitated a lot of issues, you know, payment and reimbursements of therapy for their daughter who found Braden on the floor. Uh, you know, so we've really got to speed that up. And uh, to Senator Brenner's point, I think uh, the provisions that we put in there are uh, something that'll hold up. And you talked about what Ella went through, um, the family as a whole. There are costs involved that, um, you know, loss of wages, so on and so forth. It's hard to imagine that sexual extortion and what happened to Braden does not fall under the Victims' Compensation Act. It will if this law passes the way it's been written, right? So yes, they need support. This is a criminal act, and we needed to make sure that that was clear for the purposes of the crime uh, compensation fund. So we worked uh, with folks to get the law right, and I think it's going to be good. And I think it's going to provide those added benefits like counseling mm -hmm. and other things that families will need. It seems like after the story of Brandon Marcus came to light, we sadly had too many stories of teens in Ohio and beyond. How often do you as lawmakers hear pleas from the public to say, do something? Unfortunately, constantly. Um, I chair the uh, Senate Education Committee and I hear from families and parents all over the state of Ohio of uh, personal uh, tragedies that have occurred. And um, it may not have been necessarily sextortion, but uh, the social media aspects of everything has put an uh, extra layer of stress on all the students. Uh, you know, we've started to take uh, some action with the recent bill that uh, was passed in House Bill 250 with trying to limit the use of cell phones in classrooms. Uh, but we, this is a one in many steps that I believe we as legislators are going to have to take uh, here in the General Assembly. Uh, this is the first law, but I think there should be additional laws and, and safeguards put into place uh, for students, uh, including things dealing with artificial intelligence, uh, because that's an aspect that, uh, you know, I've been following it, and it's getting to the point where you can literally take, you know, just some photos of somebody and, and make them do things that is uh, completely inappropriate. And I think that our laws probably also need to, to get, deal with that issue as well. I recently read an article uh, put out by the Department of Justice, and for the sextortion uh, part only, uh, law enforcement agencies reported over 7,000 uh, cases of this and, and 22 suicides. So that is way too many, and so we really need to get working on getting this approved. Well, the FBI said this is the fastest online yeah. crime in the country growing. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like you're not done yet. I mean, Braden's Law is just the beginning. That's what Rachel and Jennifer told me as well. They're not done yet. I have to ask, where does this fall in line with federal laws? Does it? It does. Actually, um, there is a bill that passed May mm -hmm. 10th, I believe, and yep. it's sitting on 
the president's desk waiting for his signature that includes some of the types of things that we're trying to do in Ohio. So it's being fought on all levels from local government all the way up to the president's desk right now. And we hope that he'll sign it. And we hope that we can pass this yet this year and that our governor will sign it. But you said it was just past May 10th. So again, not until today, we're dealing with a crime that has been pervasive for years with our children. It's been surprisingly, um, surprisingly below the radar, right? So one of the statistics I saw was just between 19, or 2021 and 2022, there was a five-fold increase. So the numbers are going up so quickly. I think that's why you're seeing people deal with it. And really so far, only seven states have passed a law. Two others are working on it in Ohio as well. So we're in the beginning stages, but yeah, it should have been handled a while ago and, and we just hadn't yet. Well, thanks to families like Braden's, we're getting the word out. Thank you to lawmakers who are taking a stand against these criminals. Thank you for doing the story. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.